Hello everyone and welcome to this week's OpenAL 3D audio tutorial and this week we're going to be having a look at the various distance attenuation models. The distance attenuation models in OpenAL determine how the volume or the gain of a sound source changes as it gets further away from the listener. Obviously, as the listener moves away from a sound source, the sound should appear to get quieter and quieter, and we tested out a simple example of this last week. This week we're going to be determining exactly how the gain of a sound source changes with distance, and we're going to be determining the exact distances at which the sound is attenuated, and how much and how quickly it gets attenuated and things like that. We have a few options to decide on when it comes to exactly which formula OpenAL uses to calculate the attenuation, and we're also able to set some of the variables in these formulas to change how quickly and at what distance the sound gets attenuated. OpenAL provides three different attenuation models, each of which has a different way of attenuating the gain of a sound source over distance. Each of these models also has a clamped version, and I'll be explaining these in a bit. To choose which attenuation model you want to use, you just need to call the AL distance model method and put in the name of the distance model that you want to use. You can only choose to use one distance model though, and that distance model will be used for all of your sources, so you couldn't have one source using one distance model and another source using a different one. They're all going to be using the same distance attenuation model. Each of these distance models uses a different formula to calculate how the gain changes with distance, and these formulas have some variables which we can choose the values of to fine-tune the formulas. All of the models use a roll-off factor variable and a reference distance variable, and some also use a max distance variable. So after choosing which model we're going to use, we can then choose the values of these variables for each source. So each source can use different variables for the distance attenuation model. Therefore, these variables are properties of the source, and so can be set in the usual way by calling AL source F, putting in the source ID, choosing which variable you want to set, and then putting in the value of that variable. So I'm now going to go through each of these three distance models and explain how they work and how the different variables affect them. So we'll start off with the exponential distance attenuation one, and this, as you would expect, causes the gain of the source to decrease exponentially as you move away from it. The reference distance variable determines at which distance from the source the gain will be exactly one, and this is actually the case for all of the distance models. So if you use a reference distance of four, then at a distance of four away from the source, the gain will be one. If you choose a distance of six, then at a distance of six away from the source, the gain will be one, and so on. The roll-off factor determines how quickly the gain decreases as the distance increases, and this is also the case for the other distance models as well. The higher the roll-off factor, the steeper this curve will be, and therefore the quicker the volume of the sound will decrease as you move away from it. If you want the sound to be able to be heard from a long way away, then you would decrease the roll-off factor so that the gain doesn't decrease as quickly when you move away from the source. The clamped version of this distance model simply clamps everything below the reference distance to a gain of one. This can be useful for when you want to have a sound effect to be played over an area rather than being emitted from a single point. For example, imagine that the source was placed in the middle of a town in your game, and you make it play some general town background noise. By setting the reference distance to the radius of the town, you would hear the town sound effect being played at full volume anywhere inside the town, but when you leave the town, the sound would get quieter and quieter as you moved away from it. If you wanted the sound to be played from a single 3D point, then you could set the reference distance to zero. When using the clamped version, there's also a max distance variable that you can set, and after this distance, the sound won't be attenuated anymore. The inverse distance model is pretty similar to the exponential model, with just a slightly different shape to the curve. Again, the reference distance determines the distance from the source at which the gain is one, the roll-off factor determines how steep the curve is, and in the clamped version of this model, everything before the reference distance and after the max distance is clamped. The linear distance model is slightly different from the other two in that the gain decreases linearly with distance. This isn't really a very realistic model of how sound actually works, but it does mean that there's a definite distance at which the gain reaches zero, which is not the case in the other two models. With this model, it can be quite useful to just keep the roll-off factor at one, 
and then the reference distance is the distance from the source where the gain is 1, the max distance is the distance from the source where the gain is 0, and everything else can be found by linearly interpolating between these two points. The only difference in the clamped version of this model is that the gain for distances below the reference distance is clamped. If you'd like to find out more about these distance attenuation models and see the exact formulas that they're using, then you can check out section 3.4 of the OpenAL specification, which I've linked in the description below. So let's get into the code and try out some of this stuff. So before we start, I'm just going to set the source's initial position to zero and set the Z position of the source to zero so that it only moves along the X axis. And I'm going to print out the X position so that we can see how far it is away from the listener. We then need to choose which distance model we want to use by calling AL distance model. And I'm going to start by trying out the linear distance clamped model. Then in the source, we can set some of the variables for that distance model. And first off, we're going to set the roll off factor, which as I mentioned, we should just keep to one for the linear model. Next, we need to choose the reference distance, and this is the distance at which the gain will be one. And because we're using a clamped model, everything below this distance will also have a gain of one. So I've set that distance to six, and we also need to set the max distance value, which is the distance at which the sound stops being heard, and I'm going to set that to 15. So let's run this, and we should first hear the sound being played at full volume, and it should do that until a distance of six. And now you can hear the volume decreasing, until a distance of 15 when the sound can no longer be heard at all. So let's now try one of the other distance attenuation models, and I'm going to try the AL inverse distance clamps model here. And in the source, I'm just going to set the roll-off factor to two, and I'm gonna leave the reference distance as it is and set the max distance to 50, and then let's run that. So you can hear the sound effect playing at full volume until it reaches uh, a distance of six away from the listener. And now as the source moves away from the listener, you can hear the sound effect getting quieter and quieter. Let's now try the same thing again, but with a higher roll off factor. So the source's gain should now drop off a lot quicker after it goes past the reference distance. And you can hear that happening now. And one final thing, if you don't want there to be any attenuation at all, then you can set the roll off factor to zero and then the source will always have a gain of one, regardless of how far away from the listener it is. So that is going to be it for this week. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Have a fantastic week, and I will see you all next time.